Yes, hello YouTubers and uh, my company customers and future customers. Uh, this is a small video that I am preparing to show you what all I do before I send you these Kritonica ESR meters because these ESR meters come all the way from Argentina and are subjected to a lot of shock and abuse while they come all across from that area to India. So this is a standard uh, process that I do like today I have received five units from there and two of them have been rendered useless. So let me just open up this and give you a look. The ESR meter itself is enclosed in a very sturdy plastic box so I have never had a problem whereas in these things have uh, you know broken or anything of that sort. It is basically that certain times they just throw away these boxes in which they are like a couple of them and ultimately you know uh, they can render the analog meter movement pretty useless but certain times it could be something else too but uh, technically this is what it is so first of all let's take out the meter this is a beautiful uh, analog uh, ESR meter to test the capacitors so we let's take out the ESR meter from the protective bubble pack and let's keep the bubble pack in a separate place I have been talking about these uh, leads which I get from uh, Argentina along with these in this consignment that I have received the leads are technically better than the other ones that were coming earlier even the even the multimeter box which Rawl has uh, sent is amazing quality uh, but again as I have told you it is subjected to a lot of ifs and buts while it comes to India so it is very important for me to cross test this before I sell this anyway uh, I would say these are like decent enough uh, leads but uh, technically if you ask me I always recommend everybody to use some better pair of leads with this particular ESR meter and because it uses traditional leads so there is no big deal about it anyway these are the leads which I use these are very flexible and these leads are made by probe master which I use for testing all of my ESR meters this is gold plated and uh, fully removable from here so I'll just put this back and these are gold plated crocodile clips this side now the first idea to do is to put cells into this unit so let's take a screwdriver and open this ESR meter up it is a nice good quality screw which goes in this area and uh, we will keep it here and if you see that this meter technically has a stand here so you can technically keep it up like this at 45 degree angle and uh, you can see it from this side anyways so now let's open this product up you can see the quality of the product this side also it's not bad at all anyway so this is the inside view of the Kritonica ESR meter which technically is based out of a multimeter box but Rawl has done a lot of work in this product you know it is just not a small circuit that he just pumps into it and he just makes uh, any box into a ESR meter any analog multimeter into an ESR meter if you see that this particular PCB he has basically made to fit according to this particular analog ESR uh, analog multimeter casing that he uses this is not a very simple basic design he uses a PIC microcontroller here and it is basically 
I will show you this. It is based on the PIC 16F883 microcontroller. This particular ESR meter uses two different type of cells. One is a 9 volt battery and then it also uses two 1.5 volt cells. So these are nicely coded it says plus this side and minus this side so we just have to put the 9 volt battery inside this area and we also have to put the cells onto this side. They have a section under this uh, place where the cells actually they get grooved in and so they don't move. So now once this process is complete uh, we just have to put this cover back. But if you note that you know there is a buzzer here and there is a variable pot here which is meant for calibration. I am very clumsy with this because I have to make this video the other way around. I mean the multimeter is technically not facing me, it is facing towards the camera and the camera is actually facing towards me. So this is quite tough guys, believe me. Once you do it you will understand. Anyways, so we open up this back cover like this. This is a nice uh, stand, you know, it is not those very lousy stands which you see off the street and here you stack your ESR meter. Now what you do is I'll give you a closer view of this ESR meter before we try to do anything. So you can see the nice meter movement and the needle there and then you can see all the other side like the zeroing uh, variable resistor under this place, the switch to switch it on, the light, the AC mode switch and if you do it the other side it becomes DC mode switch, DC and AC. Yes this actually meter it works on AC and DC principle both and then there are two lights down one is a red light and one is a green light. Anyways so now let me power this thing up and give you a small demo. So here you go. One button and this blue light comes up. If you want to switch it off, you keep this button pressed for a second or so. It gives two beeps like pa pa and it switches off. That's it. So the process is very simple. Now what I do after this is, <clears throat> this is my first inspection thing. I always wobble up the meter to see if there is any problem of this needle getting stuck to the surface of the glass. One of the meters which I have just taken out today, the needle is actually stuck to the glass because of shock I think. Anyways, so in this meter you can see the movement of the needle is pretty nice. Then what I do is, I take my probe master probes. I do not, I never use the probes which come along with it. For a simple basic reason, I don't like using uh, those probes at all. But as they are bundled I don't like to rip them apart from the package and uh, sell it to you guys. So here it is. Now if you see that I have connected both the uh, leads to this place and I have access to this particular section. Now first idea is to calibrate the meter so that it zeroes to the it zeroes actually. So I will just switch it on and take it on to AC mode. 
Now if you actually see, I can actually vary the needle here. So it, you know, I can vary this needle here and I have to make sure that is on the zero, it's on the zero point so that all resistance of the leads are basically eliminated. All the resistance of this lead is eliminated. So the first idea is I'll just zoom this thing up for you. So you have an idea on what's going on in the meter here. And now I'll calibrate this to zero. Which I think is done. There might be a little parallax error. You might be thinking it is not on zero, but I actually think it is quite zeroed there. Anyways. Then my other process is the next, my next process is that I will touch this two, three times to this so that I can see the entire meter movement, how it is behaving and is it coming back to the same place or the needle is stopping somewhere else. One, it gives me an idea as to it is not sticking onto any surface. Second, I see that I get repeatability when I am actually using this instrument. So I try it a couple of times before I just leave it. Anyways, then what I do is I don't need any very precise uh, kind of uh, measurement or uh, some calibration with these meters until unless it is really calibrated uh, out of uh, spec and then I actually need to open up and uh, variable uh, I, I need to twist that variable resistance which I showed you on the PCB inside this meter. So I have a 5.7 ohm resistance which I use as reference to calibrate these. Uh, I am trying to source like 1 ohm, 2 ohm, 5 ohm and 10 ohm different type of resistances for this meter also but till that time uh, then what I do is I just grip this uh, thing the resistance actually and I actually see the needle movement now if you see this needle movement this multimeter uh, sorry this ESR meter is technically showing us uh, 5.6 uh, ohms of uh, resistance on the AC mode. The AC mode will be the mode in which it is testing the capacitors. Then after I, I, I check this on the AC mode, I will remove this resistance and then I will shift the switch to DC mode. Because I have shifted the switch to DC mode, I again, again need to put these crocodile clips to each other and I again need to focus this uh, to zero because there is a little drift from the AC to the DC and the DC to the AC mode. Now once I do this, I again use the same resistance and I connect it to the crocodile leads and I actually see the meter. You will see that again the meter is at 5.6 ohms. But now there is a beep coming out, out of it and there is a red color LED which is also glowing. We will come to that point later on. Not many people know that this is a versatile or a, you can say a low cost uh, transformer tester also. So what I have done, I have two coils here. So what I have done is I have taken one meter of insulated copper wire and I have removed the enamel from one of it in the from one of it over here you know one of it in the center and uh, yeah one minute let me focus the camera back again so these are the two uh, coils I have both of them are with one meter of insulated copper wire which I have bound on it but what I have done with one of it is that the, the center part of the wire I have removed the insulation so that that is technically a shorted coil and the other one is a fine coil so what I do after this is I just take the crocodile clip here and I hook up the other one to the other side. You will see that in this particular uh, uh, in this particular coil uh, we have the green light coming up and absolutely no noise and the meter movement has gone back. So this indicates that this particular coil or transformer 
is basically fine now on the other hand i will use the other uh, the other coil which i have made which is having the stripped uh, enamel from the center and i will put this you will see that immediately a shot is indicated and plus the red light comes on and there is a beep coming out from the meter so it's a very quick go no go kind of a tester for transformers also so once uh, uh, this meter actually passes these three tests which i do uh, with these three kind of instruments and visual inspection that is the only time i keep this product in my inventory uh, because i sell it to many people in usa and uh, there are a lot of people who buy it off from ebay.com and i have been shipping this worldwide uh, but it's very very extremely hard for me to arrange it in india and uh, you know sell it to you guys i am a fan of quality uh, and uh, you know very unique kind of tools which i sell and i'm proud of selling these kind of products in india but it's very unfortunate that uh, the cretonica guys are so far off from my country and it really is a pain in the ass to arrange these kind of uh, instruments and sell this in our country uh, i am not aware how many people actually appreciate this kind of work but i really uh, rack my ass in checking these products before i ship it to anybody uh, this is the standard test i do with all of them it's been like Two and a half hours now that I'm just testing these five uh, instruments which I have received, and two of them unfortunately are not working, and three of them are totally QC passed. Uh, so this is a small video. So thank you guys. See you.